said, I think Gujarat session was really, really informative and really filled with insights on what Gujarat has been doing. Seguing, with the segue from Gujarat, coming to the very uh, sector which has been booming in Gujarat is the dairy sector. And today, while dairy India is one of the largest producers of uh, milk, today we will be exploring the possibilities and the prowess and the progress that the sector has made in the dairy products. Uh, I would like to invite on stage our panelists for today. I would first like to invite our moderator, Mr. Uh, R.S. Sodhi, <laughs> Chairman, Indian Dairy Association. Sir, please. I would like to invite Sri Manish Bandlish, <laughs> Managing Director, Mother Dairy Fruits and Vegetables. Sri Saurabh Shekhar, GM South Asia Nutrico. Sri Amit Vyas, Managing Director, Amul Dairy Anand. Dr. J.B. Prajapati, Chairman, Vergas Korean Center of Excellence. And lastly, Sri Sanjay Kajuria, Director, Corporate Affairs and Sustainability, in Nestle India Limited. Today, we will be dwelling into the multiple facades of the Indian dairy industry, its progress to date, and how it has now become and is in the position of becoming a global hub for Indian dairy products. With that, I would like to invite uh, Sri R.S. Sodhi, the moderator of the session, to come and set the context of the session today and the flow of the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Trajan. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is the, after the very lively Gujarat session, when you come to dairy, it seems the extension of the Gujarat session. So thank you very much. Uh, all the distinguished panelists from the dairy industry, we are very happy that the chairman of India is one of the biggest uh, dairy, corporate dairy, Shri K.S. Mani is there. All the guests from the other dairy industry from India and abroad. This uh, session on exploring the evolving landscape of the dairy sector, what are the innovations, what are the progress, and what are the opportunities which the panelists are going to discuss. And I'm very happy to see that Panelists today which are present here are representing the best of the Indian dairy and from the, they are professional, they are from dairy industry, they are from academic side, they are from research side. So uh, I hope we are going to get very good outputs and inputs and suggestions from them. But like I have worked in 41 years for dairy so I, I, I can't stop myself. Before they speak, I speak for a few minutes. Well, I think we are very lucky that we are representing a sector which any Indian, every Indian, anywhere in the world can feel proud of it. I mean, dairy is the one sector, if any Indian goes anywhere and say, I represent India, we are well respected, well recognized, and people look for the guidance. We know India is in dairy in India is the biggest sector with the more than 110 billion dollars annual, uh, you can say the production. In Indian currency it is around 11 lakh crore. And out of that around 35, uh, uh, yeah, 3.5 lakh crore is the organizer pack of branded sector. But biggest, uh, I think, we, if you see the growth or progress of Indian dairy sector, vis-a-vis -vis how much we have grown in food, I mean, cereal, last 50 years, our cereal production multiplied by 2.8 times. Our population also multiplied by 2.3 times. Total food production multiplied, all food production are four times, but dairy multiplied by 10 times. And that is why we have become from a milk deficit dependent on imports to the 
world's largest producer and but we are different in india than the world in india dairy is not a business is a source of livelihood for 18 million small farmers and reasons for this growth we all know because we all have worked because 50 years back government of india decided that we have to become atman nirbhar so farmers policy makers everybody started working on that and we believed in we invested in in farmers own dairy supply chain mainly the cooperatives and the other these farmers own supply chain they produce world's best most efficient dairy supply chain where farmers get 60 to 70 percent of what a consumer pays nowhere in the world farmers get 60 to 70 percent what a liter of milk consumer pay in the market and lot of innovations right from structure of a dairy industry for collection of milk processing processing of buffalo milk packaging milk in the plastic pouches selling early morning every day to the consumer these are the all innovation dairy supply chain done by the indian dairy industry but now to continue to have this growth level to continue to have the leadership in the world there are few challenges the first challenge is, is which is true for everywhere in the world in the agriculture dairy is the next generation how to motivate next generation to continue in their dairy because they don't i mean they want to do something where it is a glamorous modern and without any doubt commercially well remunerative other threats are there which i think our panelists going to talk about the plant based of the sustainability because everywhere dairy or agriculture has been main villain although agriculture is contributing only 14 percent to the greenhouse gas emission 11 percent is dairy but any there you go in the world they say smallholder dairy farming is unsustainable but we have to say like india dairy is a very very sustainable mr amit vyas and mr kajuria they are going to talk on this but let me tell you in india a dairy is a emission whatever is happening is emission for livelihood not emission for luxury when you go for charter plane you get your vegetables from kenya you drive a big car that is the mission for luxury but indian small holder dairy farmer with two or three animals is a mission for livelihood in india we have to if want to give good price to the farmers we have to see we meet the consumer expectations consumer expectations and what i can say is the uh, demand trends are changing and one very favorable thing in india with 1.4 billion people is that now consumer with the more prosperity more income has upgraded their food from mainly carbohydrate based diet to more animal sourced protein and fat and in which dairy is the prime highest because it is also vegetarian diet then india we know the branded or packed dairy market used to be around 20 percent fortunately or unfortunately during covid it multiplied the growth was there around x percent but during covid 3x growth came and now indian consumer want branded packed trustworthy brand known brand but affordable brands and the other big change which i have seen not only dairy or in food is now consumer trust and faith is more growing in the local and regional brands in foods they want locally produced locally uh, available and affordable so these are the consumer trend which all the dairy industry has to meet and i think there are opportunity challenges the best the other one the biggest challenge is how to maintain this efficient supply chain of dairy which has given india the leadership how to get new techniques or modern techniques of dairy farming so that cost of production of mill can be reduced so farmers can earn more and we can be internationally competitive because today if we are producing around 220 million metric ton which is 
23% of the world milk production, which was 50 years back, only 6% of the world milk production after 25 years will be producing 628 million metric ton. And we'll be having 100 million metric ton surplus. So we have, and we can only source, we can sell our product in the world market if we are price-wise competitive. So that can only happen if we get cost of production low. So these are the things, no doubt, my other panelists are going to talk about the digitalization, sustainability, what new technologies, how the, what are the opportunities. So th these are the just uh, my views. So what we have thought is that we have got a very knowledgeable and experienced panelist. They all can speak for 45 minutes, but I have already told them that you'll be given seven minutes each. Afterwards, one or two questions I'll ask, then we'll leave the floor to the audience up to the, whenever organizers say you stop it, we'll, we shall stop it. Okay, so first I'll give, I'd like to give uh, opportunity to Shri Manish Bandish, the managing director of Mother Dairy Delhi. And uh, I mean, Mother Dairy, if the biggest innovation of Mother Dairy is, I remember during my childhood days in the 70s, when I used to stand in Delhi, Delhi Milski booth in the queue with a token to buy two, two bottles of milk. And I think, Maniji, I am one of the first customers who bought your milk from your vending machine by putting coin in that. So that was the biggest. So welcome, sir. Thank you, uh, Swadhi Saab. And your uh, initial introduction is always very, very welcome and uh, very, very uh, knowledgeable for all of us. You've been an icon in the industry, so it's very, very fortunate for us to hear what you said. Although, you said that you didn't say anything about us, so... So anyway, I'll try to... <laughs> so I'll try to add uh, whatever I can. And uh, yes, I represent Mother Dairy. Uh, some of my team members are also sitting here. So Mother Dairy, just to give a little bit about Mother Dairy, we are going to complete 50 years very soon. Next year is going to be our 50th year of existence. And uh, we come from the same uh, overall uh, philosophy or vision, which was set by Dr. Kurian, that we have to uh, give the best price or affordable price to the, our producers and uh, affordable uh, and best quality products to our consumers. And hence, from that perspective, Mother Dairy operates in three different uh, areas of uh, work. One is the edible oils under the brand name Dhara. Second is we deal in fruits and vegetables, which is under the brand name Safal. I'm sure that must be touching your lives in some way. And obviously the dairy part, which is the Mother Dairy uh, in terms of the overall dairy products. When I look at, from my perspective, some of the uh, areas which we touch upon as an organization, I think, uh, like Swati Saab said, mother, uh, our dairy industry is one of the biggest, or not one of the, we are the biggest producer of milk across the world, with around 23% of milk produ uh, produced acro across the world. But the typical part of India is that we are a consuming uh, uh, country, Almost 98% of that milk is consumed within India of the 1.4 billion people which are there. Very vibrant uh, population of India is growing and it is not only growing in terms of numbers, but it is also growing in terms of aspiration, in terms of uh, their overall need or I would say post last two or three years, the adaptation of uh, you know, good quality products or the demand for good quality products has increased manifold. I think some of the things that our consumers are really looking forward and asking from us is that as an organization, we are constantly you know, coming out with uh, innovative products. Um, when I say innovation, innovation has multiple dimensions in my, my, uh, my thought. One, as an innovation, one is introducing new product categories or adding to the current product in terms of either fortification or in terms of making it more valuating for the consumer. But at the same time, in the Indian context, 
the consumer, in spite of the fact that they ask for more products or innovative products, I think our consumer in India is very, very value conscious. So as an organization, how are we able to provide a value added, value conscious product, uh, sorry, to a value conscious customer is the biggest challenge this particular day industry really, really faces. While we are growing almost on all the value added categories as an industry, if you see published data, most of the categories would be growing at 15 to 20% uh, year on year for the last many years. Still, like Sohi Saab said, only 30 to 35% of the industries and in, in the organized space. There's a long way to go to give our consumers uh, what is rightfully in terms of the best of quality under controlled conditions and temperature maintenance. We are able to provide these products at affordable price to our consumers. I give a, uh, an example of curd, for example, 10 years back, I often repeat this example. When we go 10, 10 years in our past, all our family somewhere in the past would be, you know, uh, making dahi at home, right? But today, if you see most of the market, I would say uh, almost 90% of the market is already converted uh, to pack dahi because the consumer is finding value there. And as, as organizations like Amul, Mother Dairy, etc., have created a value proposition for the customer that they find it useful, they find it affordable, and hence they buy large quantities of curd, and that category is growing multifold in all. Similarly, as organizations grow, if we are able to provide consumers with these categories which are affordable, let's take example of paneer or any other category which is consumed in, in the country, if we are able to bridge the gap between what they produce at home and what we are able to provide at in terms of value, I think the dairy as an industry would can really leapfrog into the next level, which we are already doing. Uh, uh. Second part in, in terms of innovation, I would I also say is the part where uh, we are able to adapt to the local tastes of our consumers. We always say that language changes every 50 to 100 kilometers. Another dimension of distance is also taste. As we go into our hinterland, as we go into our uh, various geographies, the taste profiles also change. Customers' expectation of various products keeps on changing as we go along. And hence, as an organization, it is important that we are able to give our consumers the local cuisine, local taste, which we can adapt uh, to for the consumers in, in our areas of operation. And obviously, packaging innovation in terms of uh, how we are able to provide customer with the best of packaging, which can sustain the products that they carry. When we look at the younger generation, and none of the younger generation is sitting here, believe me, uh, the millennials, as we call it now, as they are coming uh, up as consumers who are now 20 plus, uh, the lifestyle changes that they have had in the last few years, you look back as parents or as siblings in, in our own households, their living pattern is totally different. I'm sure when we wake up at six o'clock in the morning, that's the time when they're actually trying to sleep, you know, at four o'clock in the morning. So their consumption patterns, they are, they are, the way they, they consume or look at categories has totally changed. And I think consumerism is now for 24 hours. Pehle jo is now almost 24 hours. You see uh, players like Domino's, et cetera, now delivering at two o'clock in the night. So these customers are going to define in the next four or five years how the market is going to change. And hence, as an organization, if we are able to look at those customers differently, provide them products which are slightly different, and this set of customers is not saving. This set of customers, like us, for example, we always look at you know, how much I am saving in the bank for my rainy day. Uh, this particular set of customers, as far as I understand, is just earning and spending. So more and more spending power is likely to come to the market in, in, uh, in the years to come. And hence, as the dairy industry becomes more and more relevant to this set of customers, I think the opportunity for us to grow is very, very significant. But again, we have to adapt to their needs. We have to give them products which are relevant for them. Like Sodhi Saab said, some of these products uh, which are coming to the opportunity area are, for example, healthy products. Are, are we able to uh, 
you know, fortify these products to their specific needs. For example, high protein he mentioned, uh, that is one consumer trend, you know, while it is still small uh, in India, but when we go abroad, high protein is being talked about everywhere. We were in uh, Chicago, uh, all the shelves were filled with the, you know, high protein products. Uh, probiotic is another thing which, uh, which is coming up in India. So some of these trends we need to anticipate, uh, which we are seeing, which are happening today in India. And I think uh, from that perspective, most of the companies are working towards engaging with our customers to be able to give those uh, products to the consumer. Uh, while I can... You could wrap up in the next one or two minutes. So I can go on. I've just yeah, touched the consumers. Minutes. So... Uh, so from that perspective, I think uh, as an industry, uh, we are fortunate to be in this industry uh, because this industry does not see the downturns which typically with economy come and go. Uh, and this industry, I think, will remain relevant from a consumer point of view. And also, uh, like Shodhi Sab said, from a producer point of view, we make a lot of difference to our farmers. This is one industry which really, really makes a lot of difference in terms of earnings and livelihood from our, for our marginal farmers. So from that perspective also, I think the more we grow from our consumer point of view, the more we can service our farmers. And hence, uh, from a social responsibility perspective, I think uh, we as an organization, we keep on focusing on that aspect as well. And uh, in coming days, we expect to grow uh, as an industry and as an organization in our area of influence. So thank you very much. Thank you, Shri Manish Bandeji, for giving your perspective on what is today's millennium looking for. Now I'll request Shri Saurabh Shekharji, General Manager, South Asia from Nitrutico, which is the world's uh, one of the leading animal nutrition company. So he is going to talk about new techniques in farming. Please. Good evening, everyone, and uh, uh, thanks, Mr. Sodi and uh, Mr. Manish. Just to just to give a uh, brief introduction that who we are, we are not one of the production companies, uh, which uh, companies like Amul or Mother Dairy is. Uh, so we are a Dutch multinational uh, working in dairy, poultry, and aqua for last 110 years. And morning also, Pradhan Mantri Ji, uh, when he was addressing, he addressed one of our factories which came under Ministry of Food Processing, which we started in Surat. So what we do? Uh, the first thing is, uh, I was asked to talk on new techniques in dairy farming. When uh, Sodisa was telling that, uh, yeah, we are the largest producers of milk in the world, nobody denies that. Uh, we are growing, we'll grow much faster, and the consumption class will always remain local for us. Now, what are the challenges? Next slide. If you see this data as a heat map, this is very interesting, right? Uh, we'll grow by around 7% for next 10 years, and uh, then also we'll be deficit in quality milk in India, right? So there'll be, there'll be some pockets of excellence uh, globally where the production will be surplus, but India will be struggling to feed its own market. And what, and what are the key factors where we see the challenges? Uh, if you see the efficiency gain and rising yields needs to be, you know, uh, the production needs to be stimulated. Uh, when we see about the supply chain, the supply chain is one of the most efficient supply chains, right? It's backyard farming, catering to the local market. Now, there are, is severe pressure on India, uh, not only from the governments abroad or the developing developed countries, but the local consumers, if the, you talk about the niche class, if you talk about my daughter, she looks at the carbon fit, footprint on every packet, what uh, we produce in any of the products. The new generation is asking for what is the efficiency? What is the efficiency we are bringing in to the production cycle? Now, carbon gas emissions, we are one of the billions, the entire agriculture industry, which is not the right case to put in, but we are under tremendous pressure. And we need to negate this by bringing in uh, efficiency into the entire value chain. 
you can see uh, rising farm output and development costs. The other thing is the raw material costs, what we have seen in a few years, that how from corn surplus country, we are now struggling for corn, for feeding our uh, animal population. So what exactly uh, we are asking for? We are asking for bridging the gap with technology and nutrition uh, and concept of precision nutrition. If you see, we talk about farm feed and health. It cannot be, the production cannot be in isolation, right? So nutrition, we talk about building a strong base with right early life nutrition. So something like spray for, this is one of the products we talk about. Then optimum feeding, not under delivering or over delivering of nutrients, right? Uh, as soon animal in industry develops an alternate raw material, you won't believe after a few years, it becomes available for human food chain. Right? Because the thing is, the ingredients, the raw metals are getting into shortage. Uh, we talked about, uh, I'll not talk, but yeah, recently I was in a conference in Singapore just last week, right? and they were talking about insect meals and everything. Right? You won't believe they are also looking at how the cricket snacks can be fed to human beings. So anything which we develop, human food chain will directly compete with us in coming days. Now managing mineral nutrition, that is another one. Creating a strong base for the animal is important. Second one is optimizing nutrition is critical. And then coming back with the micronutrients, how we are going to balance that. Every company today, if you ask, in India produces mineral mixture for animals, right? But you see the quality and you see that how it is going to optimize the performance of animals, that is a big question. The other thing what we talk about is digitalizing the precision nutrition and precision farming. So there are different tools when we talk about, and we, were, we are often challenged that India is a very fragmented market. And if you want to deploy these technologies, the affordability comes into question. And uh, I can say we, we had developed some of the models which has worked perfectly for us and for the farmers. What we do is uh, we work with farmers uh, to develop the model which is onto uh, you know, uh, the return on investment and sharing the profits. So if you generate profits out of that, if you buy a product or solution that works for a farmer, but if you want taking the money from his wallet and trying to tell him a story or share a profit story, which will come in future, nobody is interested. The big farmers may be, but small farmers are not. So uh, what we do is basically, uh, we are working with nutrients. The other thing, what we see an opportunity is feed and milk safety. So today, if you talk about uh, any of these companies, right, so everybody is talking about milk safety, which is coming from mycotoxins, right? One of the biggest risks, the quality, uh, adulteration, leave apart that. But other than that, also, there are many raw metals which infiltrate into milk through the production cycle and creates a huge human safety risk. The other one is on the farm, what is the digital intervention to increase the production and reproduction at the same time? So this is, this is what uh, we have developed some of the tools, which is, uh, again, uh, what we call is Nutriopt. This is the entire nutrition management cycle. And this is applicable for everything, which is total mixed ration, ration forages. And then uh, we talk about the total complete feed. So what exactly we do? We analyze the raw metals. And raw metals, that is individual nutrients, not to deliver, over deliver, or not to under deliver. Then what are the insights? And then optimal diets, it can be a, it can be a mixture of everything. Uh, we are working with, uh, in Punjab, with the big farmers on silage. Uh, we work into western coast, uh, western part of the country with uh, companies like Baramati, right, uh, uh, Gokul Dairy. And uh, to see that how these equipments and how these solutions are working for their farmers. And then modeling the optimal animal performance and business success, right? And this can be applicable for anyone and everyone. Uh, the thing is that the reach for us is very limited. The reach for cooperatives is huge. The penetration is huge. So we want to seek and collaborate with these cooperatives where their infrastructure can be used to mutually benefit the farmer where they can grow more with the same kind of animals and the same amount of land. Next one. So on-farm technologies, uh, so this is one of the things which is very mobile, uh, cost optimal, uh, because India, if you want to deploy equipments, you cannot deploy the farm is too small and the clusters are too diversified, right? So these are all 
portable machines which can help the farmer and the cluster to find out what the raw materials, local raw materials are and how we can optimize the nutrients for those raw materials. The second one is the MycoMaster. This is again a feed safety uh, aflatoxin management toolkit which can be deployed at the farms and uh, we deploy that, uh, we work very closely with Nestle on this uh, into this Punjab and Haryana belt, right? So where their milk procurement team uh, seeks, uh, we jointly work on that how to control aflatoxin M1 into the milk and uh, we have seen very successful results. This year we are facing a tremendous challenge because the corn is coming with very high moisture and the mold growth is uh, impacting the aflatoxin content in the feed. So uh, this at the farm level, at the feed mill level, and at the cluster level is critical to analyze and then immediately act upon that. Then again, the silage scanners are there uh, which uh, see the heat map where the mold growth is there and how optimally we can uh, you know, uh, grow silage because silage will be another opportunity in nutrition going forward for all of us and our farmers. Next one. And this, come on. And this is the last one, right? So on farm, what exactly uh, you can do, right? So these are many of the companies, if you'll see, if you go to LinkedIn or Facebook, there are n number of companies who are doing this, right? To AI, these are, again, like a Fitbit kind of thing, which they do it for herd management. I think this is a long shot. And, uh, uh, but we are trying that with uh, one of the companies, which is a startup into dairy IoT called Stellabs into certain of the farms. And we had seen very encouraging results that how to drive that profitability. The cost is prohibitive, and uh, we need to see that how this can be a win-win situation for the farmer uh, and the dairy and for everyone who is involved in this. So uh, this, this is uh, the conclusion that definitely we are one of the biggest markets, but the challenge will be that to feed the local market, we'll need milk, more and more milk. We have to have to produce the milk with the same amount, I think, the land is not going to increase. The land mass is not going to increase. The number of animals will be under pressure. And three, 3.5 kilo per animal production is going to be a bit challenging. Right? So for this, the techniques and technologies needs to be uh, a big interventional force. And uh, I request everyone, mostly the cooperatives, to collaborate on this and help us to make sure that the Indian farmers and consumers win at the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Shri Saurabh Shekharji, for a wonderful presentation on uh, animal nutrition, especially for Indian farmers. Now I'm going to invite the speaker, I mean, from our organization, which has sown the seed of milk revolution in India. I mean, they are the torch bearer for Indian milk industry. That is from Amul. Shri Amit Vyas, Managing Director, Amul Dairy, and uh, he is going to talk about uh, sustainability and digitalization in the dairy supply chain. Please, Mr. Amit Vyas, please. Thank you, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Sudhisha, and all my colleagues here and fellows here sitting here. Uh, what we have seen day before yesterday, we were at 77 not out. So we are entered into 78 and we had a big function. 31st October is our foundation day. So we celebrated with a lot of farmers and all together. And uh, this journey of uh, 77 years and now entering into 78 and we say that in next 25 years, 625 million metric tons and India would be around uh, 42 plus uh, percent of the milk uh, 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 supplies in the world. So it looks like that is it possible so to be very honest yes the technology has changed we have been uh, Manish Bhai also talked about and Mr. Shekhar also talked about how to move ahead uh, Amul has always been as you know I've been pioneer now uh, you know from a dairy we have now into chocolate bakery malt bread spread ready to eat therapeutic food take home rations now we're into mayonnaise we're into uh, ketchup we're into noodles you know lot many and the protein uh, basket uh, coming up in a big way but uh, the base remains the farmers, the animals, and that's where uh, the entire focus is. So we are talking about digitalization. We are talking about you know having Fitbits, as he just pointed out. Uh, we have already put up more than uh, 
more than uh, 15,000 of Fitbits, what we called as, uh, on the animals, and the data is coming directly into our system. Now, the, he talked about, Shaker, Mr. Shekhar talked about the price and the cost. You know, we, if you go buy a Fitbit today at a big company, it will cost you in thousands. Even for animal Fitbit, costs you more than 15 to 20,000. We are talking about two rupees or three rupees per day per animal. That's where Amul has started, and now we are innovating it, reaching to a price of 50 paisa per animal per uh, day. So you, yeah, it's on rental basis, but the entire data comes back to our server. And today you may be surprised that sitting here, I can show you right now at this moment, you may not be knowing how many kids are born in this world, but we can tell you how many calves are born in Kera district right now. How many of them are male, how many of them are female, how many died, how many are alive, how many of them are sold. So that kind of information is available. Once you have that kind of information, you can do wonders, you know. So, on sustainability, first the entire model of Amul is right now on triple C, triple C. So, C stands for cattle, C stands for cloud and C stands for consumer. That is the model on which we are working on and this model of digitalization, when you say animal as I talked to you, today in Kera district right now where I come from is the farmer uses the application if animal is not well, just use the application. The data goes directly to the doctor who are on, on, on mobile and he reaches and we say that 108 will not reach before but our doctor would reach to the farmers to take care of the animal. That is where uh, you know the technology has reached. So we have reached to that level. Now coming to the point of uh, you know once he reaches there, the success of this you know the base is what basically per animal yield needs to be increased. That is the point where we need to work a lot. Today you will be surprised that we are uh, having the highest embryo transplant been done. More than 3000 embryo transplant already been done in animal and we have got calves which are you know along with sorted sex semen we have female calves almost uh, more than 45000 female calves have already been uh, you know born. But then ultimately if they have more female calves means male were used to go to you know the, the slot it used to be on the fields but uh, fortunately now with uh, this kind of sorted sex semen embryo transplant uh, and and you know it's all about sustainability now you say that how because earlier that male calves were you know genetics has to be 50 50 obviously and when we digitalize it we started looking at the data and that's where we realized that in our area 65 were 65 percent were more male calf rather than female calves and today we have almost 85 to 90 percent of female calves coming then. So that means you have been able to you know sustain it and the farmer uh, obviously once they have it. Now then the question comes is that if you have a high genetics you need to have good for feed and fodder. That is the point that uh, Mr. Shekhar was also trying to point out. But tell me where is water? Where is water? We say that in our Indian mythology says that water is going to stop for next 100 years and there will be no drop of water on this earth. So we need to work and that is where Amul is now working on rainwater harvesting and when we say rainwater harvesting means 100 percent we have made a from the geographical survey it has been a dark zone we have been able to make it to wet zone. All our earlier we used to send tankers of water today we do not send tankers of water the water in the bottom of the earth has increased. Today we are talking of having you know ultimately at the village level we need to have rainwater harvesting. And that's where now at each and every cooperative society at village level today we have rainwater harvesting that is getting put put up now, and that's where once you the table will come up. Obviously, once you have that water, you can have fodder. Now, when it is fodder, you know what we have done today. We have an application called iKisan, and one on that iKisan farmer can use the application. Those farmer who wants to sprinkler you know fertilizer, but it has to be organic. Now we say why organic because the soil condition needs to be improved because if you see the water percolation rate is not going down in, in, in the earth mainly because of, 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 the, of the fertilizer that we use. So we say organic fertilizer farmer we use the application we have got 14 drones that goes there sprinklers all this and we have tied it with um, ISRO and we are monitoring the fields directly from satellite that what is the fodder that is growing. You would be surprised last year based on the data what we realized and you know last year only we started this in our area there were 22 percent less fodder. Can you believe this data has come up and that is where we know when, when we talk of sustainability we need to talk about per animal yield. 
so embryo transplant will give you more but at the same time you also need to take care of the fodder but at the same time you need to have the water and then for water you need to have electricity for that amul is now putting up all solar uh, across all our villages uh, we have now put up a tender and we are putting up all solar panels at our village level cooperative societies that's where we you really know, need to you know focus on that and it is not only on you know only for the lights we have done our research and today we have got three plants where in now all our bulk chilling centers wherein you collect almost 5000 liters or 10000 milk is running we are putting up a you know try, taking a trial now because we took the trials on our chilling on on chocolate side you will not believe that without any battery storage without any kind of you know thermal storage with directly on the solar system we have been able to achieve almost reduction of almost 20 to 25% of our power, power bills so now if that happens in in chilling of the milk you can further bring it down so in 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 totality we are saying as a part of circular economy you know from the dung now when we talk about uh, feed and fodder so the feed ha amul has been giving for last more than 50 50 year 50 plus years but fodder is the area that we really need to work upon that's where this all the model of this fodder and fpos coming in making at the back end dry fodder and all and the tmr is going to be the future but as you rightly pointed out mr shekhar is uh, about i was also in us and looking about uh, many research about the toxin level um, this uh, aflatoxin problem but i think lot of uh, you know uh, sensors and that needs to be installed at the soil to get out exactly what is there inside the soil that's where we really need to work upon and that's where amul is now working on on more on the agriculture side to see that apart from you know you not be knowing in dairy i think professor prajapati sahab is here and we used to say that from 1 liter of milk processing we require 3 liters of water correct but if you look in totality it is somewhere around more than 1000 liters of water because when you grow the you know the fodder what is the quantum of water that is required so we have got now you know we are giving farmers all the machines which reduce which which consumes less which uh, use less uh, quantity of water so the fourth aspect to it you know as a part of circular economy is about the uh, dung and that again is converted into biogas and at source only that needs to be utilized you know if you transport um, something and try to convert it and purify it and make it bio cng yes it is possible but at the same time with the slurry you need to make it the uh, uh, organic fertilizer that needs to be sold and farmer needs to be convinced you know government of india is putting lot of efforts in trying to do that and giving lot of subsidies on that and that's going to be future like in ethanol you had uh, uh, you know uh, in 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 the petrol and diesel you putting ethanol and today we are talking about uh, of having organic fertilizer if you use a uh, uh, fertilizer in the country i think government of india has given uh, subsidy of 1 rupees 50 paisa per kg of uh, that now so that is going to the future now as you go in the market today we have developed a backpack just like a backpack which you carry we have got a backpack wherein we have taken the trials in the field that if you go in village to buy vegetable today we are talking have a backpack you can buy your gas at at the village level that is what now the new model is that as a part of circular economy how the gas can be utilized if you got someone has got more gas with the same pump he can pull it in a backpack and a person can go to a society and try to uh, get that um, gas use it with uh, almost around uh, you know less than 1 cubic meter but two times of food they can make and two times of tea at least they can make in the morning gets over and then you can go there and get it refilled and that's around 10 we have now uh, taken the trials and we're learning uh, in the process that ultimately the gas you know you know earlier it used to be like electricity going all the way from there but gas would be utilized at source at and again it is it is uh, related to the sustainability where amul is right now working about and lot of uh, working go, uh, going on in that level and the last but not the least is about the health of the animal you know ultimately it is the health of the animal that gives you know how we can reduce the methane content today you will be surprised that you know uh, we have been taking allopathy medicine taking multivitamins we have developed homeopathy medicines filing 21 patents on homeopathy now sir and on homeopathy when we say that if you do a treatment of a an animal at around 500 rupees we are doing a treatment at 50 rupees and no antibiotics we have reduced almost 25% of antibiotic usage has been reduced in our uh, milk shed area and uh, recently two days back our team has visited we selected the paper in uh, colombia and they presented on homeopathy and we were the only who were who were there for the homeopathy to be used on the animals on the cattle and we have got excellent result in subclinical mastitis problem and you know you will surprise we have got now 3000 machines at the village level when every day morning and evening farmer pours the milk we know how much fat how much snf how much is quantity 
from that we have a data of 10 days we give it to the village level resource person we call as vrp and there are almost thousand vrp in the every village every village has got one vrp and that data will come to him and he will see that okay this animal at this house this let long this is having subclin this is having less snf which implies means either it is putting water inside it or it is subclinical mastite or animal itself has does not have that much of to give more fat and snf so from there we are giving homeopathy medicines to treat that subclinical mastitis so ultimately benefiting the farmer and in the feed itself now we are adding some herbal products i think from uh, kerala our uh, chairman sir is also here so we are also into ayurvedic now medicines and trying to give add more into our feed so that their digestibility at the human uh, i am an engineer but uh, what i learned from the doctors is the human ph and the, the balancing has to be done so we are trying to do that and see that if more and more people try to use uh, this ayurvedic also in our feed we can able to bring down the methane content to large extent uh, which is coming out from the animal so whatever people talk about that india uh, doing lot of work on sustainability that's an area in nutshell and let me tell you amul is in the last uh, across uh, amul 47 plants i handle almost 1.8 uh, billion us dollar business but you will not find a single paper in the entire organization we are paperless organization and when we say paperless right from the main gate till anything which is account is host to host payment and we are 100 per, there are almost around 170 printers been removed from the system and nobody takes uh, use any paper in that organization that's the way we are working and uh, last not that the least but the plantation needs to be done uh, and amul uh, and dr sodi sahab was there it has been started 10 years back today uh, we are planting almost more than um, uh, you know 15 million plantations every year and uh, with a with a sustainability rate of almost 50% at this juncture so that's way we have been doing and uh, the technology it is we can utilize technology in dairy and particularly for the farmers to get more milk per animal ultimately helping the environment also the farmer and not other days where we will be around 42% and will be one of the biggest exporter in the world thank you very much Uh, thank you very much sri amit vyas ji for telling us that uh, how animals in kerala district are more digitally connected than the human being and when he was talking about the farm level farmer level sustainability activities i remember one day i asked one farmer dairy farmer in one up country have you heard about sustainability you know what was his answer his answer was sir sustainability starts when stomachs are full sustainability starts when stomachs are full unfortunately sustainability word has been hijacked by the environmentalist but it has got different interpretation when you ask the farmer or any uh, ceo of any company or a policy maker but let us uh, talk further on this subject i am very happy to invite shri sanjay kajuria ji director corporate affairs and sustainability from one of the world's biggest and the oldest organized branded food company and as far as the dairy is concerned they are the pioneer i mean before amul entered they were in india i mean uh, india as i can say and they are also the one of the old of uh, company who have started procuring milk from farmers in a very organized way so i'm very happy to invite shri sanjeev khujuria ji please come sir thanks a lot sir sir uh, your words are always very very encouraging so thank you very much so uh, let me start by saying uh, you mentioned that we have been in this country for a long time uh, we are actually 110 year young Uh, we have been in india since 1912 uh, globally we are 160 years uh, young company uh, we have 10 uh, nine factories today uh, the 10th is going to um, we will st soon start uh, the 10th factory uh, construction etc uh, really into a lot of food products and and as what is have rightly said that on the branded food uh, we are on big time on branded food so all the products which we manufacture whether it's Uh, dairy nutrition foods um, i'm sure you all know what maggi noodles and milk made uh, and nescafe and kit kat and munch uh, the the topic which sodis have asked me to speak today is on sustainability and i was just thinking uh, how to really put it 
to make it slightly simpler for myself and, and simpler for you. I think sustainability has to operate in a way that the farmer income doesn't suffer. In fact, farmer income goes up. At the same time, environment or vatavaran or whatever we want to call it gets better. Now, four or five things uh, I will take examples of just to make the point. Uh, there are many initiatives, and I think uh, Vyasa uh, mentioned quite a bit, and thank you very much for that. Um, we are in the similar business, so a uh, lot of initiatives which we are taking are also very similar. So, the food or the feed or the, the ahar for the cattle, if we say it has to be, have it has to have lesser GHG emission, the challenge is that you have to make sure that the productivity as far as the farmer is concerned doesn't come down. So we have actually, we uh, help our vendors provide a lot of feed to the farmers, which is nutritionally very balanced. But what we have done with the support of research and development we have made sure that the emission come down for the same um, feed by about 8% and the productivity rather than going down actually goes up. Suddenly there is much more response from the farming community. We are partnering with them in this because when they see that they are not losing the productivity, suddenly the interest goes up. Uh, there is some additional cost which happens when you create a feed like this or innovative feed like this. I am very happy to report that Nestle has agreed that we will subsidize that feed so that the farmer doesn't get the impact of that additional uh, expense which is on feed. The other area, and we are very proud of this, uh, is you know all of us talk about big biodigesters, um, you know, which cost about 2 million to 3 million Indian rupees. What we have started doing is we have started putting biodigesters which are small, about two, meet, two square meter biodigesters. If there are three to seven cattle, this biodigester is really good and very effective. What the farmer is getting, if I were to put it very simply, with 45 kilo of uh, cow dung, they get about one and a half LPG cylinder equivalent. They also get and I think uh, Vyasa made that point, they also get good quality manure. Mm. You know, so in the end what is happening is, three things are happening. Uh, clean energy, reduced emission, uh, the cost of LPG comes down, or whatever another alternate fuel they want to use. Uh, very good for the health, because you know, you're not using the, in, in many places there is still prevalence of uh, wood being used as a fuel, that comes down. Uh, the other big benefit which comes is when the, when the manure is desi, as, as we call it in Punjab, is desi, the produce gets better, and we have seen great examples of that. Then the question comes in, biodigester doesn't come in free. If the farmer is investing so much money in this, at some stage this equation will not work. Uh, so we have agreed that we will invest in these biodigesters to help the, our partners, farmers, because I think Sodisa put it very well. Uh, it's, a, it's a creating shared value. The better quality, the better productivity we get, it's good for our business and it's good for the farmer. So on all three parameters, I think Biodigester does a great job. And we are going to put in more and more. Uh, Vyasa, I'm sure, is looking at it uh, scaling up again. The third, which, which is very, um, close to our heart is uh, the plantation. So what we have done is that we have looked at our area, which is Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan. We have also looked at what are the fruit bearing uh, trees which are existing. We are helping farmers to put those trees. Uh, the income from the fruit goes to the farmer and the, the trees, as we all know, also sequester carbon. And the fourth example I want to give, actually it comes from you. Uh, in our factories, we receive a lot of milk. So last year we received about 340 uh, million liters of milk. And milk, as we all know, has huge quantity, significant quantity of milk actually is water. So we have now technology which extracts water from milk and actually uses it for utilities. As a result, the groundwater extraction has come down. And so, Ditap, if you allow one more example, which is uh, very close to our heart, is 
stubble is a challenge you know every time there is some discussion going on on stubble burning and so on and so forth so what we uh, discussed with our partners is that why don't we start going out and start buying stubble which increases farmers income we convert these into briquettes and then we use it for as a biomass boiler the project will start sometime in the next year and we are very hopeful it will also help in stubble burning and also increased income for the farmers so really the message is uh, sustainability will work because 80% of our farmers have between 2 to 4 cows only and only if in this partnership they don't think that their income is coming down rather than going up is the time when it will get accepted well uh, that's all i had to share thank you thank you very much uh, shri sanjay kajuria ji for uh, just appraising us how nestle is doing lot of innovation in dairy supply chain so thank you very much now the last uh, speaker after listening to all the practitioner i like to invite the academician and also a veteran academician in the dairy science dairy technology uh, dr j b prajapati Uh, he worked through his life in uh, one of the most uh, pioneer dairy science college smc dairy science college anand and he is also my colleague on indian dairy association as the chairman of the western zone so he is going to talk about innovation in dairy processing sector thank you uh thank you sodhi saab and my colleagues on the dais and <coughs> the <coughs> learned audience i can see a uh, lot many things have been talked on the supply chain and this uh, my turn is to talk based on uh, something on dairy processing side uh, actually many things are getting repeated many many changes are coming and uh, Uh, there is a kind of contradiction now going on that people are thinking that we should get less processed foods to be more healthy and other side the desire of the consumers is to have very high shelf life uh, highly uh, miss the sku's in a convenient form should give very dense nutrients so many things we want many things but we don't want to uh, spend more on that so यूजली हमको सस्ता चाहिए बहुत अच्छा चाहिए और ज़्यादा भी चाहिए तो तीनों चीज़ साथ में करनी हो तो नॉट ओनली डेरी एनी फूड प्रोसेसिंग सेक्टर हैज नॉट मैनी डिफिकल्टीज बट जैसे भी ट्रेंड चल रहा है जो सबसे ज़्यादा अच्छा ट्रेंड जो हमको दिखा पोस्ट कोविड कोविड के दरमियान कोविड ने हमको सिखा दिया कि वॉट डू मीन बाई फूड बाकी सब इंडस्ट्री चुप हो सकती है फूड नहीं हो सकती है बिकॉज एवरीबडी नीड्स सो प्रॉब्ली देर आर लेस देन टेन परसेंट पीपल इन द रियल फूड प्रोसेसिंग सेक्टर वॉट प्रोसेसिंग बट हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ द पीपल वॉन्ट टू ईट फूड नो बडी कैन सर्वाइव विदाउट फूड सो द मोस्ट चैलेंज चैलेंजिंग टाइम वॉज कोविड एंड देन वी लर्न ए टर्म कॉल्ड एज इम्यूनिटी सो एरा हैज कम ऑफ इम्यूनिटी बूस्टर्स और आई थिंक Amul started with haldi dud. Golden latte was there somewhere, or many other. Or, many other ideas were given to Sodhi Sahab. But we started this. Similarly, after health, the buzz word is protein. So, protein is not expressed now in percentage. That how many percentage in there? But how many grams are there? So, I have 200 ml. 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 So, I have so that is the trend of advertising and also trend of increasing but in protein when we talk it should be the quality of protein which matters not the quantity which matters it's the those persons who are then the gym and other things we are talking about i always advise that see what quality you get because the protein is the building block of our body and then if it is utilized by the body it has some value ab utilization ke bare mein hum bahut दूर तक मतलब डीप में चले गए दैट प्रोटीन इज नथिंग बट अमाइनो एसिड्स एंड व्हाट काइंड ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड्स आर यूजफुल टू योर बॉडी हाउ योर बॉडी इज गोइंग टू चेन अप दोज अमाइनो एसिड्स एंड 
make your own protein. So those proteins we can do, not only milk proteins are not only 100% utilized, but they have some surplus amino acids which can complement to others. And that is being, uh, now needs to be highlighted. So protein can there, now we have seen uh, many companies, Amul and many other multinational companies are there in beverages. We have a lot of scope in protein powders. Probably years back when I was studying, beer was considered as a byproduct and waste product, but now it is the most valuable things. So we now 100% utilize whey and whey protein is one of the most important. But apart from whey protein, we should also focus on micellar uh, caseins uh, because we want higher shelf life, higher viscosity. So functionality in the foods can be done. Uh, the ingredient market for dairy is increasing. Fractionation of proteins is increasing. Probably a few months back, uh, we were talking about a plant which is manufacturing now lactoferrin in India, which is in terms of quantity is very, very small, but in terms of quality, it is very important. It's the iron binding protein which we need. So we encourage on therapeutic health pharmacobiotic aspects of the milk ingredients that industry should to do so that they will get much, much higher value than any traditional product. The health segment is growing. People are becoming more and more conscious about the products, what they are eating. So apart from activity, we have got special products, for example, CLA and rich products, soy, fortified, fiber fortified products are also necessary because the only deficiency in milk is fiber. So if you, if you supplement it by some means, it becomes almost a complete food. So that is the requirement and we do it. Similarly, lactose was blamed for many things and now we have got lactose free milk and uh, low lactose milk. Friends, it's not that lactose is bad for us, it is good because it supplies us galactose and if you want to keep your brain sharp, you need it. So we also, we also now hear about the products which are melatonin enriched, that means they will be sleep inducers. Enriched melatonin and glass, so these things are coming, and we want now everything in a SKU, choti chiz ho, pocket me rakhe chalu, or jab marji tha pilu khalu. So, so many things are going to go there, but uska saath saath analogs ka bhi market grow ho raha hai. These are imitation products. So, ek ek tarak sona, ek dusri tarak pital hai. Wo batane ki it is our responsibility being a dairy professional to ask that we have never done any advertisement about dairy in the beginning. What are the nutrients in dairy, how are they helpful? Everybody knew from centuries. But in the last, almost 10 years, it's not the most important thing. When people started the anti-milk campaign in social media, then I feel that dairy should now be proactive and they should advertise the benefits of milk. What is nutritional milk? 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 It's not simply a blending of few nutrients and then you are getting the most beneficial, most nutritious products on this natural product, 100 percent on this earth is milk. And it is the cheapest also in terms of the nutrient dense products. With it has more than 300 nutrients in that and that perfect balance, no artificial, nobody can create it. So we talk about the quality of proteins and fats and minerals and other things. Calcium, calcium ki baate sab karte rahe, aap calcium kha jao. So almost 80 percent, 90 percent, bahara jaya, koi kaam ka nahi hai. But same calcium when you talk with milk, it has something else. So we should now educate the society, which I feel as an academician, about the nutritional health aspects of milk. And also uh, go for such products which really impart health, because persons are going to choose better than that, and the convenience, these two things are more. Or in this sustainability will come when you go for alternative processing. We have heat processing a lot. Now technology for cold processing is coming. Uh, even UV sterilization is coming. So even induction heating for cheese also is coming just for plasticity. So other alternative technologies are increasing. And uh, I am happy, very happy that those persons who are manufacturing equipments and other things, they are really very innovative and trying to fit to the um, modern day requirement. So uh, there are so many scopes and ample opportunities we need to work on. And uh, I feel happy that uh, I am in the environment of Amul here. And when I see the growth, uh, I feel very, very proud of. And probably 
I can proudly say that in the last 40 years, I have produced so many graduates and professionals uh, who are running the dairy industry. Abhi dairy, shayad India ko koi plant nahi hoga jaha hamara koi student nahi hoga. So that is the uh, most thing uh, which I feel proud of. Thank you so much, sir, for giving me opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Prajapati. I think not, don't say India. I mean, there is no plant with your graduates and all over the world. I mean, any city he goes, he has got local host. You can imagine how many students he has got all over the world. So, we have question. We have a buzzer round. <laughs> so, not more than 10 seconds will be given for answer. Okay. So, first answer, uh, question is Maniji. Um, I'll ask from my childhood days. Okay. What do you, with looking to the convenience, what consumers looking for the packed branded milk in pouches, what do you think in India is the future of the vending machine in milk? Because, uh, whatever we are seeing of the generation which is there, most of the people are looking at convenience as factor. And uh, like all other categories, the, I think over the last few years, even the milk part has also undergone that customer expectation, chain calorie. While we save up almost 700 tons of plastic by use of these vending machines on, a, on an annual basis, uh, from my perspective, we are just maintaining those numbers. I don't think there's any major okay. growth which is likely to happen. Okay. Thank you. So next very uh, short answer from Mr. Saurabh also. You talked about this, your nutrition technology with the example of Nutri-Opt. Can you tell for Indian farmers condition, man, can Indian farmers can opt for, afford for it? Can they uh, use it? Sir, uh, short answer, they can use it. Uh, but yeah, uh, what we are doing is we are creating at milk collection centers pe ye machines laga dete hain. Uh, Still Labs ke saath humne kiya hai. Humne Nestle ke Paras ke saath kiya hai. So cooperatives ke saath jahan karna chahte hain aur jo log open hai will be more than happy to help them. And the farmers can easily afford that because this is we are doing it uh, to collect the data and to help them, not charging anything for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, again, question to Amit. Okay, uh, you talked about digitalization and sustainability, but one question which I raised during my talk was that next generation of farmers is not very much interested. But I believe Amul has done a lot for uh, this, uh, to cultivate the interest for dairy. So can you tell us what are the, briefly, how you motivate the next generation of farmers to be in dairy? First thing is that, you know, it's one thing was about livelihood, now it is about business. So if now what we are seeing is the way the milk is increasing to the tune of more than 20%, means farmers are interested, but animal yield is increasing, so that is getting attracted. Now, that's very true that in our area it is said that the girl would not get married in the village because she doesn't want to milk an animal, to be very honest. So that's where we developed a technology where a person can go on a bike, it has got a milking machine at the back, per animal they would charge 10 rupees in the morning, in one hour he can do 18 milking. Mm. And in the morning, he would earn 180 rupees. In the evening, he would earn 180 rupees and whole day he can work and the machine can be kept aside. So the milking problem of that, you know, we realize that there's a problem. The next generation would not come in it. And that's where we said that now that's an area. The second thing was, you know, every time a farm also needs to know whether the animal is pregnant or not. We have to call the concerned person. Today we are talking like in human, you would come to know our wife is pregnant or not by putting just a strip of urine on the, in the morning and you come to know your um, wife is pregnant. But same thing we are trying to develop and we have already cracked that is to have a strip where farmer can do just put up a drop of milk or a urine and they would come to know whether the animal is pregnant or not. But the cost is a bit high. Right now we have reached up to 70 rupees. We are talking about 5 rupees or 10 rupees. That's where because then it becomes easy for them to understand that. And the fourth thing, the, one of the third, one of the biggest challenge is about the fodder and feed. You know, everyone has to put it, uh, mix it and that, try to give it. So now uh, the first uh, order for our TMR has already been placed. So we would be packing, we have taken the trials wherein just give a pack of 25 kg. 
directly just put it on the feed so no no need for them to get cut the you know fodder and bring it and dry fodder and then try to give feed along it nothing can be so that's the way we are moving ahead and trying to see that it's more profitable more money to the farmer uh, person obviously he will try to come in the business and technology is going to be the ge game changer in long term from one animal to around 10 animals or 20 animals and digitalization technology people would be attracted to it uh, thank you amit ji now next question is to shri sanjay kaduria ji uh, i mean you gave very good uh, initiative which nestle is doing and no doubt amul is also doing for individual farmers based bio digester and it is a very practical way of sustainability um, but you are giving to few farmers amul is also giving how to multiply this number how to ensure get resources for every 80 million farmers are there how to ensure that millions of farmers can adopt because everybody is using gas at home everybody is using manure in their farm so how to get more and more farmers for this no i think very very important question see what we are doing right now we are providing it to the farmers at at nestle cost really so mm. we but how many you can provide yeah so that i think that's a very valid question to me the once the farmer who is very progressive you know i always say pratishil farmer is <laughs> our pride once they get to know that they are actually saving money on this they are also saving money on manure they are also saving money on environment helping the environment become better i have a feeling scale up will happen and once the scale up happens the cost will come down okay like the example which uh, vyas sahab gave you know once it reaches a level where it is comparable to the gas cost and the fertilizer cost i think we will see the change okay thank you sanjay ji you want to add something yeah please Sir, right now what we are doing is that earlier farmer were reluctant to spend the money of around 21,000 is the cost of a 2 meter cube uh, uh, balloon that would cost. So what we have done is with the government there has been a lot of support by the government in this and I think 15,000 is given by, farm, uh, by, the, by the government and we are saying that only 5,000 is to be given by the farmer and it is getting recovered uh, by the farmer itself. So this last year we, pr we have put up more than uh, uh, almost around 5,000. This year target is to by March we will be adding another 10,000 into this. The awareness so is going Awareness up. is as the awareness is going up more farmers are, are doing that. Okay. The last question Sir, to… some. Hey, one minute, yeah. Part of the political intervention, yeah, 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 it can be Ujjwala because of farmers. Good, good, I think a very good suggestion yeah. Yeah. under Ujjwala. Yeah. Okay, lastly to Dr. Uh, J.B. Prajapati ji, you talked about uh, milk-based protein, how it is good for health. But now there is a lot of talk about plant-based protein. So what way milk-based protein is better, worse or different? Uh, sir, see, as I already told, the protein quantity doesn't matter, quality matters. And if you see the protein quality is measured in terms of its digestible Achha. amino acid scores. So PD was doing this and at that time, if uh, milk has the highest one, soybean was down from that, and then the rest of the plant was down from that, and then the rest of Now the right thing is that you understand, it's not only that what is digested, but what is utilized by the body. And that utilization is terms of the number of amino acids that protein has. So if you see the milk protein, uh, its DIS score is 130. That means it has the amino acids enough that can be 100% utilized by our body to make body protein, but it has some surplus amino acids, which it can donate to some other food which has limiting amino acids. Mm. For example, if you are taking rice or wheat, or rice cup 0.37, yes, sir. wheat has 0.5, soybean has 0.7. So, is against me, milk 130 hai. So, that is the quality of protein we talk about. So this is how we differentiate or sir, baki protein to both sir protein said they can the way protein or casein. Ugly convention about many kari. things. Sir. Okay. So our we are just running out of time. Who is the lucky audience who wants to ask question? Only one audience will be given the choice. Are yaar, dono ladies are mean to agar between male, female, then female ko prata. Dono. Chale, aap uh, very good evening, sir. Sir, actually as a consumer I want to ask. 
like uh, maybe mother dairy people are also there amul people is also there sometime uh, likewise na our retail uh, on a sh uh, shop owner they are not maintaining the temperatures and all that expiry date goes over or it is some like because it's a uh, with the black ink and all this thing it just wipe out and all so from consumer side sometimes there is an a dilemma whether i should buy or not usually because awareness is increasing so nowadays people are not buying but what kind of the innovation that we could do into the packaging so that these problems should not come because if we are not uh, using that thing the retailer would not that would not keep yeah yeah right either it would discard so got the question question is uh, who will answer between two you can decide ki how to make consumer aware about the expiry of the milk see most important aspect is there are lot of things like qr code which is coming up now and person can scan it and then they can understand that this is the expiry date first thing is that consumer should be aware of it like any product to be very honest you ask take of fresh milk everybody knows ke 3 din ki shelf life hai 3 din ke baad main jaunga to bhi mere ko lena hai usse pehle ka doodh acha hi hoga matlab that's what uh, uh, the the things are see we are now what we are trying to do as amul is that we are ensuring that we are maintaining quality of 4 degree c in the in the our cold storage that the supply chain is maintaining 4 degree storage the point is that at the shop level the technology still we are working it's a cost again it has to be looked upon that how much quantum is there in that you know right now with amul model locate amul if you go to air application you'll know what product is lying where for how long that also now we started knowing that so only thing is that when it goes out of the shelf uh, you know if the if the if the retailer scans it then we come to know if it doesn't you just pay and don't take the bill we'll not able to know but that milk mein to hone wala nahi hai chhodi hai it's very difficult to get in in milk <laughs> but subah uh, subah early morning when the nobody has got time the model of india is like you know in the morning it's on the road and you just pay the money Chaliye, so hai. awareness is the only success only way of making okay within 10 second you can ask question not more than that Ah. So uh as you were uh, like mentioned the daily marketing uh being given uh the plant based milk the alternative daily segment that not only rising in India but also worldwide you see uh Nestle and Mother Dairy and Amul as well they have uh, recently ventured in that segment with uh different kinds of plant based milk utilizing kava beans pea protein and all so uh where do you think that alternative daily अच्छा है कि ये आंसर मैं दे दूं। आई वाज आई वाज गिविंग दम आउटसाइड मैं अभी जस्ट लास्ट वीक आई वाज इन शिकागो अटेंडिंग इंटरनेशनल डेयरी फेडरेशन सो बिफोर गोइंग टू दी मीन आई वेंट टू दी टू शॉप्स होल फूड्स एंड एमेजॉन फ्रेश एंड आई सॉ बिग रैक ऑफ मिल्क टू थर्ड फुल ऑफ प्लांट बेस्ड वन थर्ड फुल ऑफ डेयरी मिल्क सो आई सॉ विच इज द प्लांट बेस्ड मिल्क सेलिंग मैक्सिमम and very beautifully white bottle clafia forms ha calafia forms almond milk extra creamy have you tasted you know okay i uh, so extra creamy and then i saw back side is mentioned excellent source of calcium so i was very excited i was very good milk so i said let me look into the ingredients so uh, what were the ingredients first ingredient was almond milk bracket water plus some pieces of almond okay then is cane sugar cane sugar jo aap ghar pe chai mein dalte hain then is extra calcium what is extra calcium is calcium carbonate which is nothing but limestone which body cannot absorb N next is sunflower lecithin after that is sea salt सी सॉल्ट मीन जो अपन सॉल्ट घर पे खाते हो सी सॉल्ट ही होता है देन इज गोरगम एंड जेलन गम एक्स्ट्रा क्रीमी इज गोरगम एंड जेलन गम एंड देन पोटासियम साइट्रेट देन आई सा देर वॉज अ मिल्क ऑल्सो अवेबल इट एट ओनली वन इनग्रीडियंट विच वेयर आई वेंट टू माई रिलेटिव ऑफ दे ऑल्सो एट एलमंड मिल्क एंड सेट आर यू अवेयर इज दट गट दिस ओ इज इट मेड ऑफ ऑल दिस थिंग्स सो प्रॉब्लम इज अवेयरनेस and what has happened i found out like you mentioned most of the successful dairy companies in europe and usa 
because milk has got the mo most thin margin. They diversified into plant based because margins are high. So naturally, whatever brand equity, whatever distribution, whatever plants they had built on the from farmers' milk, now they are utilizing these resources to promote this so-called synthetic factory manufactured chemically made milk to earn more profit. So they are not protecting. So the, it is a fad. Once you read it, you know, and you know how much protein, too much of protein, 240 m, how much you know, I will give you one gram protein, it's mentioned. So 0.4 percent, it is mentioned on the pack, one gram protein in 240 ml serving. And still people are buying, paying premium, double than the price of milk and buying it. So let me tell you more millennium. It is, I was talking to one marketer. He say in today's world, you can make fool of millennium more by marketing gimmick than the people like me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Sodi sir. Thank you, everybody. This has been a really, really engaging and an interesting uh, panel and a conversation. Thank you, everybody. I hope we all have taken home something or the other. And uh, while we have taken things home, I think we have learned how to be more aware and make a more conscious decision as far as health products are concerned. Uh, we would just like to give sh small momentums, mementos on behalf of the food processing industries. Uh, one for Sodi sir. So please accept. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sanjay, sir, for you. Dr. Prajapati, sir. Doc, no, no, I know him. I was just waiting for her to get there. Dr. Saro, uh, Mr. Saro. Mr. Amit Vyas. Dr. Manish. Mr. Manish. All right, thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's been a wonderful time. Thank you.